What's up, sim racers? This is Larry TJR Sim here, and today I'm just going to be talking about sim racing in general, giving you some ideas as as uh, immersion, giving you the idea of immersion. What are you looking for? If you're looking for immersion, I just want to point out a few things that may help you attain the immersion. If you're like me, I started out with sim racing on consoles with a controller and uh, evolved into getting a sim rig and and uh, uh, Fanatic wheels and Logitech wheels and you name it, all this kind of different wheels and stuff. And then you upgrade your pedals along the way. You're like, man, these pedals suck. Let me get some load cell pedals. And you're like, okay, those are great. Now I can just outbreak everybody on the planet coming up to the turn one. And then someone collides in the back of you anyway. <laughs> anyway, uh, I digress. Uh, I just wanted to point out, you know, what does it take to feel fully immersed in sim racing? Well, let's point out some of the components that I use to feel fully immersed in the sim racing to share with you to give you uh, an idea of kind of really what it takes to feel the whole atmospheric feeling of uh, racing a race car or, or you know, uh, getting out on the track and stuff and feeling like you are totally immersed, uh, feeling all the nuances of the tires scrubbing and, and the and the engine vibrations and the motion factor and all that. So you don't have to get the best of the best of everything to feel this, uh, but uh, I'll point out some of the key components that as a synchronicity for it all uh, wraps up and, and just pulls you in to sim racing and that's what I love. So let's get started. All right guys, so let's point out some of the key components that we got going on here to feel fully immersed. This will include like the software as well as the hardware. Hardware is probably the most important and the software of course helps pull it all in. So first to feel like you're in a race car, totally in a race car, you need VR. You just need VR. You can use triple screens and triple screens are nice. You can use track IR on a nice single monitor. Uh, is good for especially the uh, the games that maybe not have VR, like say maybe Grid 2019, uh, stuff like that. Uh, but th th we're talking about being fully immersed. You're looking for the full immersion, uh, money, uh, setting aside money. You know, you can set up your own budget the way you want to. But uh, to get fully immersed, you got to have VR. It's just plain and simple. So this one right here is the Rift S. I'm enjoying that one right now. Looking to expand further uh, with uh, with VR as the new headsets come out. I do have a Reverb G2 on uh, pre-order, so hopefully that'll come soon. Next up is your rig. Now you gotta have a rig, you gotta have everything mounted to something, right? Now obviously I'm not gonna even point out, I'm gonna point out a PC, right? PC is, is totally dependent on your budget. You can get by with a thousand dollar PC or you can get by with you know, a $10,000 PC. So <laughs> adds up to you and your budget. So uh, depending on what you want. Now, PC, graphics cards and all that, we won't dive into that, but you do need, of course, PC to be able to utilize all this stuff. All right, so you got a SIM rig. Now the best bang for the buck for the SIM rigs out there is the Simitech K2, in my humble opinion. Uh, it is a baller rig and I've had quite a few rigs and uh, this one uh, stands the test of time, been using it for years, and uh, it just really holds up as far as uh, vibrations go, not rattling to pieces. So uh, now, of course, to the rig here, one huge key component is, of course, how you can operate your vehicle. You got your pedals, you got your your wheel set up itself, uh, and you know those play a big part in it. So. Now, if you're like me, right now I'm rocking some Husenfeld Sprint pedals. I highly, highly recommend those pedals if you want to go to the higher end market uh, to to feel um, uh, you know pr appropriate brake pressures that you would feel in a uh, in a in a sports car or a real race car. Uh, you know, getting away from how it feels in your regular road car, right? Uh, however. If you don't have the budget for those, I highly also recommend the Fanatic V3s. Now, those things, I've been rocking them for quite a long time until uh, I upgraded to the Sprint pedals. And these are a very good set uh, to use 
uh, when you're on a little bit more of a budget. So, pedals out of the way. Uh, Fanatic V3s are upgrade to some Husenfeld sprint pedals if the budget allows it. Now, let's get into the wheels. Wheels are, are, are you know, all over the place. You can have a Logitech, you can have Fanatic, you can have direct drives. Let's just cut to the chase. Direct drive is the top of the line. I don't care what direct drive wheel you get out there. It can be the Fanatic DD1, DD2, or it can be the AccuForce like I'm running right here, V2, two, or it can be SemiCube. Whatever it is, pick the one that uh, talks to you, <laughs> that makes you feel special and run with it. Because really all you're looking for is the high fidelity feeling of uh, that you get from a direct drive wheel that you'll never ever get from a belt driven wheel so it really doesn't matter what brand you get get it love it learn how to optimize it to get the feeling that you want through the wheel as far as feeling the uh, vibrations that you want to feel the road surfaces the scrubbing feeling the tire rubbery feel uh, i rocked Occu occuforce the accuforce v2 uh Bang for the buck for $9.99. It is probably the best value, uh, I think, in my opinion, out there. Uh, I may test others as they come along or as the uh, channel's budget can handle it, but that's what I'm rocking. Also, as far as wheels, you really don't have to have a lot of wheels when you're talking about VR because when you're in VR, you think you're holding the steering wheel that you see in VR. Uh, now, the one that I use the most is this McLaren GT3. Love it, and because uh, everything works just really well on it. I set up my traction control here, my ABS, and then I'll, I'll run my stability control if I need it there. Uh, you know, uh, pit, neutral, or usually flashers, something like that. Uh, lights, uh, wipers, something optional. Usually the look behind me, change my camera views. Uh, these I'll, I'll, I'll mess with my menus as far as my next page up as far as say like, uh, automobile Blista two, where you can, uh, see your, your, uh, your menu system while you're driving or your dash, your Motec dash. I'll use it for another one there. Things like that. Now a wheel like this covers everything. Now, and of course to get it to work for something like direct drive wheel, you're going to have to get like a BG connector or an AccuForce connector or whichever connector is appropriate for your type of wheel that you're using. And I also use the SRM uh, setup here, which I have videos up on the website as well, to convert over your Fanatic wheel to use for direct drive wheels. Highly recommend this wheel. It's a baller wheel um, uh, for uh, direct drive uh, uh, situation. So, no, it's not really completely complete for immersion unless you can sit in the cockpit and thumb your your ignition right here, turn on your car, and you'll feel the engine vibrations and stuff come through your wheel, especially if you're using AccuForce. You can turn on engine vibrations and you'll feel it loping along, which is freaking awesome. Uh, of course, obviously, I skipped a step here. You got your ignition, and then you can set whatever you want, but... Use your starter right there, start up your car. So pretty cool. Um, and then of course you can adjust all these the way you want to, to adjust your your uh, field of view or brake bias, whatever you want to do. Just get you at least one button box uh, that's easily to reach over and use. Uh, to, you don't have to have two, but I'm rocking the DSDs and I'm using of course a custom uh, mounting plate, aluminum mounting plate that as you can see, shakes my whole rig when I use it because it is rock solid. So, um, what else? Shifters. So, this is the AOLogs shifter that I use uh, for sequential shifting. I highly recommend this shifter uh, to you out there. Uh, just has very positive feedback, uh, a nice mechanical feel to it as opposed to uh, other shifters that I've used on the market. So also if you are into drifting or if you like rally racing, you are not going to have a complete rig without using a handbrake. Uh, this handbrake is the Husenfeld handbrake. You can switch out the grommets to a heavier duty one 
uh, to make the pull harder or you can leave it a little bit lighter like I have it in this one. But yeah, very, very highly recommend this handbrake. All right, so go on past that there. You know, we covered the rig, we covered, uh, you know, the wheel, monitors, totally up to you. Doesn't really matter when you're running VR, you can get the cheapo monitor, 1080p monitor, uh, 27 inch, whatever, it doesn't matter uh, as far as when you're running VR. Uh, but let's get on to further diving into the immersion factor. So look at this here. This is an amp and with this amp, I have four transducers hooked up to it. Uh, now these are really handy. These are little Dayton uh, amps. It's a uh, APA 150 four channel amp. I keep it in stereo mode. I have four transducers hooked to it. I had two of them. One of them finally went out after, I guess about three years worth of heavy use. So uh, I'm down to one and I actually like one is just plenty. Uh, I got one amp running in stereo mode uh and uh it's you know just a two channel amp actually so you just got front and rear uh vibrations and when you're talking about a rig that is so close to you it's not like a car that everything's further away from you but you hook up four transducers like there's the butt kickers uh, that i use one there get in there one there one back here on the back side and the other one on the back side, right? Four transducers. So when you are braking into the turn one and you're locking up your fronts, forget about the, um, you know, uh, say like the Fanatic has a little vibrating motors that you can't feel anyways, uh, especially if you're running transducers, but have your transducers do the work. So I'll feel the tire scrubbing. I'll feel when the front tires locking up. I'll feel when the tires are sliding when I'm exiting. So I'm getting some, uh, uh, understeer through the curve. Uh, I'll feel that. The point is, is, is you'll feel exactly when you're starting to lose grip or when you're scrubbing your tires, uh, and you'll get used to the particular car that you're driving, you know, the point of no return when you've <laughs> slid them too much to where you got to start easing off the throttle. And that's, of course, where it comes in a nice set of pedals because you can modulate your throttle just lightly enough to to save save a slide. Or if you have a snap oversteer and the back end is sliding, you'll feel your rear transducers kick in and, and, and feel the back of your car. You may even feel a four-wheel slide from your front and back together. But uh, it tells you exactly what to do like you do in a real car when you have some precision type components that you use. Uh, so you feel very immersed in the experience. So um, now that's just some of it. Now the next step after that is is motion. So motion is, is kind of the last capping step, I think. Now it is very immersive. You feel the jolts when you shift, you feel the um, you know, the sway of the car, uh, the little rumble strips, everything. And then motion can go as low cost as you, as you, uh, lower cost, let's say like this next little variation V3 motion rig, it's 3000 just for that. Or you can go on up and spend 10,000 for a, a five DOF setup, uh, with traction loss and all that. That's just up to you. I would suggest just starting off with a two degrees of freedom motion and adding four transducers to uh, complement it with uh, the slides and the feel your tires um, uh, breaking loose. Uh, so like, for instance, when I'm at the starting line and I take off, I'm spinning up my rear tires there and I feel them spinning because my transducers are vibrating just enough to the, the feel the rotation of the back tire spinning up. And then of course my car might be rocking sideways. So my rigs rocking a little bit sideways and then it snaps back into, to uh, regaining some traction. And you feel that squat <laughs> with the motion coupled with the uh, tire spin feel engine you get from the transducers. Really, really immersive. You feel like a freaking badass when you're when you're doing that, right? 
And then you're grabbing gears using your sequential shifter, like the AL logs that feels just ever so good. <laughs> And, uh, and then of course you're going into turn one and you're starting to have to scrub off them tires and you feel some front lock up from your front transducers cause you're too dang heavy on the brake. And then you just start easing off the brake a little bit until you feel the scrub go away on the transducers because you can ever so modulate your brake with something like the Husenfeld sprint pedals. And then of course you're turning, you're feeling the bumps through the, through the steering wheel through turn one and you're feeling the tire scrub as well through the wheel only really kind of when you using a direct drive wheel you can feel that tire scrubbing in there so you have very immersive and then and then uh, of course feel when you're, you're it's automatically uh, you know straightening the tire the car back up the tires back up as you start heading down the straightaway so very immersive setup when you combine transducers with uh, motion and then of course VR, cause you're seeing everything visually as if you're sitting in the car itself. When you reach to grab a shift, you see your, your, your character inside grab this shift as well. Although it's slightly delayed because you know, they don't predict when you're gonna grab the shift as well as you can do it yourself. So that covers the hardware of it all. Let's look into uh, the software. Hopefully it just, Talking about the hardware alone was pretty dang exciting for you. Uh, I'll say that it's, uh, uh, I don't know, it's a lot of fun actually. So let me get back here to zoom back out a little bit. All right, so um, what else? Software. Now, if you're using AccuForce, you can see here that I got the Sim Commander up. And actually my favorite sim racing game right now is Automobilista 2. Uh, I've got, let me see, let me get to the beta here. Uh, 51 hours play time so far on it. So, um, and then of course, uh, the AccuForce uh, uh, Sim Commander software. Now, uh, do yourself a favor and download uh, people's uh, software setups for the particular game. Like I was checking out uh, Sim Racing 604's uh, Automobilista 2. Uh, settings for beta. I, I really like his settings. It needed a little bit of tweaking uh, for me. It was a little too light in the wheel uh, for me, but uh, it had a really good scrubbing feeling through the uh, tires and stuff. So I really liked it. Uh, but uh, I, I mainly, of course, since you know you can cater this to any way you want to, I use my own setup uh, here. And they're, of course, up on the uh, racing or the owner's club, if you have the AccuForce. So but yeah, software, software is, is, uh, really good. Now you can use for your transducers, fill in all the scrub. You can use the software from the sim, sim commander, or if you're like me and you have the next level racing V3 motion rig, uh, you got the software that you can use, of course, in there, uh, which is what I use. And I can click this on here and pull up the tactile feedback system here and adjust set up my amps and stuff and where I want uh, the front ones to vibrate or the rear ones to vibrate or just where I want the engine placement to be vibrating. Maybe I just want them in the front, maybe I want them in the rear, maybe I want them in both, you know, that sort of thing. So, uh, and then of course, you know, say when you go into profiles, this of course is all software as well. So you can go into your tactile feedback settings and have your gear change intensity, your RPM, your frequency, your RPM, suspension settings. Here's your wheel slip intensity. This is where you really feel when you're spinning up the rear tires or sliding the front tires and you can set your, of course, your frequency and your intensity of it. Uh, so yeah, really good stuff, really good software, uh, you know, uh, settings that you can use uh, to optimize uh, your experience. So. And then obviously this has the VR integration in it as well. So those are some of the components that I use between hardware and software. Oh, and let's not forget about software. So, you know, if you're playing Project Cars 2, it has its own chief in there. But the one that I really like the most is uh, Crew Chief right here. Uh, crew, uh, what version is that? V4. Crew Chief v version 4 right now. Really like it. You can set it up for your mic uh to say like hey chief 
and then he'll it'll beep and it'll make a sound to notify you that he heard you and you'll ask him something <laughs> you know what what time is it uh what's my lap what's my fuel um you know things like that or you can set it up to where he'll actually just talk to you telling you your lap times as you finish them or your you're burning up your rear tires or you're burning up your front tires. You don't have to think about all these things. He just automatically does these things just like it would really happen. So it's really cool because then you'll have someone, uh, you know, the crew chief next to you that is telling you, um, uh, well, you have a spotter. So you have the crew chief and you have a spotter. So the spotter's telling you things like, oh, they're on your left or they're on your right or it's clear. So even in VR, you know, you are limited with, you know, how much you can turn your head left or right. Uh, well, you're not limited with that, but, you know, you have blind spots in your car in VR, just like you do in real life. So you may not be able to see someone on your left tail because they're in your blind spot. And that's where your spotter kicks in and tells you this stuff. This kind of atmosphere. See where I left off now. Uh, let's see, I got a phone call. So let me pick back where I was. So... You know, crew chief, you know, you got your spotter and you got your, uh, your your crew chief voice himself. And these guys are telling you when someone's on your left, someone's on your right, uh, you're all clear. Uh, because some, even in VR, even though you can see as if you're in the real race car looking around in your cockpit and stuff, you don't necessarily uh, know when they're in your blind spot. You, know, you may get over and they get into your back left tail and spin you out, but your spotter's telling you when it's clear and stuff. So, crew chief, highly recommend it. It's free. I mean, you can't beat that. And uh, you, I use that all the time for all the sim racing games that uh, they offer, which is really all of them. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, the set of course, the competition on, uh, they actually do a really good job with their spotter as well. And uh, I, I tend to just use them as a default instead of crew chief, but for all the other racing sims, I use crew chief and uh, that's, it's just baller. You feel like you have someone in your corner while you're out there racing and uh, letting you know what's going on around you uh, as far as your blind spots go and, and you're heating up the tires too much or you're cooking your brakes, stuff like that. Uh, so yeah, highly recommend um, uh, crew chief as far as the software, plus it's free, like I said. So anyway, that pretty much covers um, you know, the hardware aspect of it, the software aspect of it, of what you need to have the synchronicity of full immersion while you, while you are sim racing. So, um, yeah, I highly recommend, um, you know, if you have the funds, check out, uh, getting some of this stuff. I'll leave links to it below in the description as far as, you know, where you can go get it if you're new to sim racing. I know a lot of the people that follow me are not new to sim racing, but you may be interested in, in, in how you can get fully immersed into the car. Feel like you are one with the car, uh, not just someone driving a, a sim racing virtual car out on track and, and just kind of reacting to the uh, things after they happen. Uh, you know, with the setup like this, I'm feeling it one-to-one -one, and I'm able to react to everything with such fidelity that it's just crazy of how good it can feel. It feels like you're pushing a real car out on a real track. So now I don't race real cars on real tracks, but I have raced motorcycles on real tracks and the atmosphere that you get when you race motorcycles is very similar to what you get in as far as a car, except obviously it's harder on your body on a motorcycle because uh, you're having to use your body to shift shift the vehicle around. Uh, but uh, the things you look for, like when you're when you're uh, trying to brake in a corner and, and making the turn in, you ease off the brake uh, because braking helps you turn and. Um, that feel the contact patch you got between your tire and the road surface is very critical to push your your motorcycle or your car to the limits and uh when you add transducers to the mix and you have the combination of higher end pedals to where you can just totally bleed off just ever so gently bleed off the brakes as you're coming into the apex of the turn and then 
then getting right back onto the gas gas just smoothly as you're exiting the turn to you know full throttle the quicker you can get on a throttle the quicker you exit the turn all this stuff really matters as far as being fast and as well as being consistent and the uh, you know you can be as fast as anybody or the fastest in the world with the cheapest wheel and not even running force feedback but that's not near as much fun uh in my opinion but when you have something that you're driving that makes you feel like you're really doing it uh that's a whole lot more fun so hiring components like this really do uh, make the difference so anyway give me some thoughts on what you run out there and what you're enjoying uh, for other people on the channel to you know hear uh what you're enjoying as far as your rig, your rig goes here i'm trying to learn how to talk again and uh we can discuss it in the in the uh uh, comments below but this is my setup when i'm using and really enjoying it a lot uh this offers the most immersion that i've ever had and i have been sim racing for many many years but this particular combination is uh is golden now you can go with any brand you want like i said doesn't really matter the brand what matters is the hiring components and uh, i'm not saying this makes you faster or slower don't really care i just this is all about immersion feeling one to one with your vehicle when you're out on track so uh feel like you're the the badass when you flip the ignition and push the starter button and feeling the engine vibrations through your wheel and feeling it through your chassis uh feeling it as if it's a front wheel drive car when you're locking when you're spinning up versus a rear wheel drive car um all those little aspects when you have a combination like this you feel uh, so really good stuff. So anyway, I hope you enjoy this video and this look at uh, immersive sim racing. And uh, maybe that's what I'll title this, immersive sim racing, how to do it. Anyway, I uh, hope you liked it. We will check you out on the track. Be safe. I'm out of here.